How to Be Lighthearted. Hi, I'm Diane Allen, a recovering, if you will, heavy-hearted person. When I was a teenager, everything was intense. Everything was heavy. Everything was hard, or as so it seemed. And I've had to learn over the years how to become more and more lighthearted and the benefit of it, not only physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually, but in the overall expression of my life. And so there are certain things that we can do to become more lighthearted. Yes, many of us are very intense. Most of my clients are very intense and we feel things deeply and we can still be lighthearted at the same time. I didn't know that years and years ago, but I know it now. And so I want to share with you four things that are important to understand when we want to become more lighthearted. And the first one is that lightheartedness does not mean being goofy or dismissive or not caring, right? Sometimes when people see me being lighthearted and joyful, they might misinterpret it as, oh, I don't care. That's not true at all. I care very deeply. And I also know that if I let heaviness and depression and all that get me down, then I can't serve anyone and I'm not lifting up the world. And so the first rule of thumb is to realize that to be lighthearted actually inspires you. It actually sets you up to be amazing and creative the way you were designed to be in a way that is growth-minded and inspiring other people. So lightheartedness is actually the antidote for the fear and the pain and the suffering that we see around the world. It doesn't mean I don't feel pain. It doesn't mean you wouldn't feel pain. It means that what we do with it might be something different than suffering and holding on to it like a badge of honor. So to realize that being lighthearted empowers you, it inspires you, and by definition, it empowers and inspires everyone around you. It's so important. Now, lightheartedness comes when you bring your creativity and your personal heart's desire or vision together. We start realizing that our creative self, that part of us that's here to bring things forward, is meant to bring out the inner vision, the heart's desire. Those two things come together, and in that spot is the lightheartedness. So it's so important to realize that you are already here fully equipped. That's my second point. You are fully equipped. You have everything you need already within you. The funny thing is we've been taught in the trance to look outside of us for everything. Look outside of us for the answers. Look outside of us for inspiration. Look outside of us for whatever it is we need when really the answers are inside. You are here listening to me right now, right here in your life, 100% fully equipped and ready to rock and roll and do what is meant to be done by you. And it can only be done by you. And so when we try to compare to something outside or, or let everyone else um, have a say without really going within, we cheapen ourselves. We make the lighthearted way that we're supposed to be get heavier and heavier. Why? Because we throw on top of our beautiful inner light, um, distorted worldviews, other people's fear, uh, what the world says we can and can't do, things we don't understand, and so we tell a story about it that isn't true. All of those things can take our lightheartedness and shrink it down. So if we're going to be lighthearted, we have to realize that we are fully equipped, totally equipped on the inside to do whatever our heart's desire is. Your heart's desire is different than mine. We have different gifts within us in order to get to wherever and emerge into that part of us that is meant to come into the world in a great way. Some people, they do it in science or in medicine or in creativity or in writing, all different things, inspiration, education. I could go on forever. The people who are most successful are lighthearted because holding on to old beliefs, holding on to judgment, holding on to pain and grief and suffering. Squash your light. And when your light is squashed, your heart gets heavy. When your heart is heavy, it's like running through jello trying to get anything to work in your world. Well, the way to get things to work better is start peeling off the heaviness 
and realize that there's all kinds of avenues to free yourself from that bondage that kind of slowly just jumped in there and you didn't even know it was happening until it became too heavy. So that's why there's so many opportunities for all of us to keep growing and, and um, emerging and evolving as we take off all the heaviness that has been added to our, our own beautiful light over the years. It's not all from us. It's not, it's not about blaming. It's about realizing that once we free ourselves from that bondage of that heaviness, then it's a game changer in our world. Our life becomes better no matter what, right? Number three of how to be lighthearted is to check your words. Words have meaning and they have lots of power. They have creative power. And so whatever you're saying to yourself is in words. Whatever you're saying out loud, it's in words. And all of those words have meaning. All of those words have an energy behind them. You know, if we say depression, that brings everybody's energy down, right? depression, right? If we say, oh, I'm happy, then everybody's energy comes up. Because words and the energy and the meaning of them have a feel. They have a vibe. So if you're walking around using words that are low vibration, then your lightheartedness will be hiding in you. It'll be eluding you because you're putting all the heaviness on top. Yes, you're doing it by what you're saying. If you say, you know what? I know I'm fully equipped. I know that I am beautiful and lovable and capable. I know it. Now you may not be able to feel it sometimes or sometimes there's all these different human things. But when I'm talking about knowing, it's that inner knowing, like I know it. And when we have that inner knowing, that will help peel away the human ignorance and the stuff that got in, probably when you didn't even know it was getting in you, right? And then all of a sudden now, why do I have this belief about myself? I know a lot of gifted people that I work with, I have to help them with the whole feeling like imposters or what do I do with this? You know, people, people have judgment about it. How do you handle other people's judgment? Well, we need to learn a way to do that to remain lighthearted, right? Because somebody else's judgment's about them. It has nothing to do with you. Everything someone says really is about them. It has nothing to do with you. So we need to check our words and the language that we use. So maybe instead of talking about what's wrong or what we don't like or what's not working, what if we started speaking toward what's true and right and good and it takes us in a direction we want. In other words, if I speak about, oh, I feel really sad today, I'm really depressed, I feel really terrible, or I could start saying, I see light from within me, right? Good things are happening that I can't see yet, maybe. Or I know that I'm made perfect, whole, and complete. I feel it inside, and I'm going to follow that knowingness. There's all different ways to handle it. And it's not just affirmations, though that's a big part of it. It's learning how to trust and know that your inner light, that creativity, that vision that's trying to emerge through you can only come out with you, right? And so if you're squishing it down, it's going to cause pain and suffering until you stop squishing it down. So if you have pain and suffering and your lightheartedness is eluding you, it didn't go away, it's just hiding. So the way you get it out of hiding is you converge your vision and your creativity with the execution of your inner vision, where you learn how to execute what you know you're supposed to be doing. Now, sometimes we say, oh, that's too big. I have this really big vision. I don't know what to do. All you have to do is take the next one step, one next step, then the next step. And as you take steps, the universe will give you feedback. You'll be able to see the right direction and know what to do. It sounds easy. It's not easy. And it's not for the faint-hearted. Being light-hearted in a world full of turmoil and difficulty and strife and fear, it makes you a beacon of light, like a lighthouse. So even moths get drawn to the flame. We have to really pay attention and, and be very discerning. We want to work with ourselves to be the lighthearted people, be those lighthouses in the world, and not lose ourselves in it. 
And the way we not lose ourselves in it, point number four, is we begin to ask the question, is what I'm doing getting me where I say I want to go? Am I really following my heart's desire? Am I really allowing that inner beauty in me to emerge really? Because all of us can do more than one thing. All of us have lots of talents and gifts and we can do all kinds of amazing things. But that's not the question. The question to remain lighthearted is, am I doing what ought to be done by me? Meaning, am I following my heart's desire? Am I following my vision? Really? And I say really, so you go deeper within. Am I really following? Are you following your vision? Like really? Because in that is where your freedom is. And that is where your lightheartedness is. And that is where your faith and trust and strength is in the universe. It is in following that that you can be more lighthearted. So lighthearted people are allowing their vision to emerge. They're being creative about its expression. Over time, it might change and evolve, and they're executing it. Those three pieces in these four points make all the difference in the world, right? So we want to pay attention to the fact that you have inner greatness. I have inner greatness. All of us have inner greatness. The diversity is in how much of it do we let show up and in what ways, right? Some people take their inner greatness and they use it for not so great motive, right? We don't want to be those kinds of people. We want to be people living in integrity so that our inner greatness shows up in an aligned, great way. And we we want to remember, too, that we are fully equipped. You are fully equipped to do everything you are meant to do. There's nothing missing. You don't have to look outside of yourself. Anything outside of yourself is a great reminder, is a great mirror, is a great thing to remind you that you are great too. There's no one who isn't great. The bigger question, the thing to pay attention to, is the people who are suffering. And whenever we've been heavy hearted or depressed or in a lot of pain, the pain is telling us we're off course. The pain is telling us we're not in alignment with where we are meant to be based on our own personal inner vision. Our integrity is enhanced when we align these things. We align our head, we align our heart, and we align our gut, our spirit. When we are in that alignment and our behavior and our words and our thoughts are focused toward where we want to go, we become an unstoppable force. And in that unstoppable force, we are lighthearted because we have the calm assurance within us that We are living what we're here to be. And there's nothing better than living your vision. That's why I hear some people say who are living their vision in a creative way. I haven't worked a day in my life. It doesn't mean they're lazy all the time. It means that they're so in the flow of the beauty within them, knowingly or unknowingly, that it doesn't feel like work. Right? So that's so important. It's so, so important if we want to be lighthearted. So lighthearted people... Allow their creativity to show up from the inside out, emerge into the world in a beautiful way. They allow that vision that comes from within them to be expressed in an authentic, honorable manner. And they execute these things so that the world and their own life can be enhanced. And the outpicturing, the convergence of those three things is where our lighthearted life lies. So from the time when I was a teenager and everything was heavy, I was really out of alignment with some things because I had this delusional belief that I didn't have any vision and I had a belief that I had no creativity. I was told multiple times as a young child that I didn't have any creativity by teachers, not by my family, by teachers. They were wrong. But I didn't know that and I took it in and I believed it and I rehearsed that in my head as children do. And then it took peeling away that statement from somebody who was an authority figure that isn't even true and take, I had to peel it away so that I could see that it was an untruth that I started believing to be true so that my real authentic creativity could show up. And as I peeled away the layers of things people said when I was little and it got in me and then I repeated them because I got in me, 
Once I started freeing that out, my empathic, intuitive self could show up more. My sensitive self could feel safe in the world again instead of hearing everything that was wrong. And my creativity flourished. Once that started, then guess what? that inner vision started to like sneak out a little bit and emerge a little bit and started to really make itself known. And as I followed, I'm even getting goosebumps now, as I followed the vision and the creativity and started taking steps and executing things, everything changed in my world. And I'm lighthearted now, even when I might feel a little sad or even when something's going on. You can be sad, you can be angry and still have a light heart. They, they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> And so now, with all my overexcitabilities and, and intensities, the vision leads, the creativity leads, that center lightheartedness where execution, vision, and creativity land, that leads. Because what I know to be true is as I peel away the layers of stuff without judgment, without wishing harm on myself or anyone else, just peel it away, it's no longer needed. Kind of donating it away like clothes you no longer wear and you donate it away. Just let it go. Give it away. Let the universe take care of it. Somebody will love that energy, right? That's why rummage sales are so great. Garage sales are so great, right? What you're trying to get rid of, other people find to be a treasure. Same thing with our energy. And allow your words to serve you and speak toward where you're going. Not about the challenge and about the obstacle. And I get stuck in that sometimes too. And sometimes as humans, we want to vent. It's not about perfection. It's about consciousness and awareness and heading ourselves in a direction that serves us in an amazing way. So I hope these four tips have helped you with how to be lighthearted and know that all three pieces of them come together in all four ways, right? So it's magic when you have the four things and you realize your creativity your vision, and your execution come together to make you lighthearted by paying attention to your inner genius, your inner greatness, asking good questions, using good language, and reminding yourself you have everything you need to be happy, joyful, and successful. So remember to keep your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you because you're a rock star. You're here on purpose to bring your unique, amazing vision out. So join me, won't you, in being lighthearted, bringing your vision out, and letting yourself be the magical, amazing human you're here on earth to be. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, be well.